Welcome into Ride the Line, the greatest podcast in sports betting entertainment. My name is Tanner Kern, certified G, bona fide stud, and you can't teach that. And this right here, this is G Money Grant Mitchell. We are giving you the picks live on a Friday morning. We did pretty good on the Thursday night football show, Grant, didn't we? Monday night and Thursday night, we were on the money. Shout out to the Pittsburgh Steelers. We said pretty much exactly what was going to happen, what was what ended up happening. Can't talk this morning. Uh, and also shout out to Will Levis. Kid looked pretty good. We were talking about this right before we started recording. May not have been the best game, but you can see the potential is there. It looks like he's going to be a real NFL quarterback for years to come. Yeah, what he did on the road last night, getting blitzed the entire night was pretty impressive. Like, it was a great night for Will Levis. The pick at the end, what are you going to do? There's not much you can do in that situation. He only looked like a rookie a couple times to me, which was very, very impressive. He looked more mature than Kenny Pickett. That's another thing that we agreed on. And when you look at the quarterback talent in the NFL right now, there's a, there's a list going around that you actually showed me of quarterbacks that are playing this week. You had Kenny Pickett, Desmond Ritter got benched for Taylor Heineke. Looks like Brett Rippon's going to start for Matt Stafford, Tyson Bajan, PJ, PJ Walker. It's just there's so little quarterback talent in the league right now that you need guys to step up. So it was almost refreshing to see somebody with very low expectations come in and put together a good performance right after he went four touchdowns, no interceptions in his debut. Zach Wilson, Aiden O'Connell, Gardner Minshew. You forgot Sam Howell and Mac Jones on this list too, Grant. Sam Howell and Mac Jones, I think, are a little harsh. They're they're still better than those other guys, but you know, in a vacuum, are they still good, great quarterbacks? No, they're not. Sam Howell's getting there. He's getting there. We'll talk about him in a minute. Uh, but yeah, it was a good night. I had D Hop over his yards. You had Jalen Warren over his yards. Those both hit. We both had Steelers. Pretty easy night. Like pretty just sweet cash money follow the page like the page like the video subscribe to the channel it's not rocket science we are giving away winners on here that's all we do tanner that's what we were brought here to do that jalen warren pick i do want to say one of my oh, easiest geez. picks of the year it was like what 32 and a half and he finished with 88 same thing with d hop like d hop hit that before the half like it was it was super what was easy. his line 53 and a half so he barely did he even catch a ball in the second half then? I don't think he did because he hit it in the first half. I, I stopped really watching D Hop. I was just focusing on Will Levis. The Titans weren't really on the field in the, the second half much. Like Will did not do that much in the second half besides the final drive. So I'm assuming he didn't catch many passes in the second half. Let's see. Yeah, he finished he, with 60 yards, 60. right? So yeah, the, all those were in the first half, basically. He might have caught one pass in the second half. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a typical Steelers game. This is what we talk about. You know, Tomlin knows his team can't score points, so they got to make it ugly. They got to hold on to the ball. They got to win by defense, and that's what they did. Yeah, it was a great win for them. The game stayed under. Didn't look like it was going to stay under. I'm kicking myself because, like, I knew there wasn't going to be a lot of points scored in the game. I didn't know if it would be 37 or 38 or 39, but there was a point when the live total was at, like, 44 and a half. I'm like, I should have put my freaking life savings on that under nighttime unders going into that game were hitting at 72 percent and obviously with that probably 73 74 percent now yeah so another big win for the under of 37 low total last night but it worked out anyways it is week nine we're moving into sunday we got our plays each of us got three plays we share one play which is always a good sign for people because we're sharing plays it's probably going to hit um this is one from frankfurt germany i don't even know if the chiefs are there yet grant I think they're they, I don't know why back. they're leaving so late, especially when they play on Sunday morning. Well, I will say, I, I talked about this on Beeson last night. Like, I don't think it's that bad of a move if you're just going there to make it like a business trip because, like, Patrick Mahomes had the flu. This man didn't want to get on a plane and go to Germany. Like, that was probably one of the biggest influences in the decision of, hey, our quarterback's sick. Let's let him go home and rest and recuperate because we send him right to Germany. It's going to be miserable. That's actually a very sharp point. You're probably 100% spot on with that. Because I don't think I don't think anyone in their right mind would leave on a Friday to go to Germany to play a football game. Besides, like the distraction, because they they make it kind of like a trip, and they want them to, you know, they bring them there for the week and all that. So I do think it the sole reason was Patrick Mahomes' flu. I did like my, how Mike McDaniel showed up. He goes to the and Brian's in front of the media, and he goes, "All right, I know what you're thinking. I'm a lot bigger in person." He, Mike McDaniel's just a funny guy. I would love to play for him. No, oh, he's a very very funny guy. Definitely, he's a. He, they, they asked him about the kid who dressed up like him for Halloween. And he said, I don't, I don't know. 
Know, he I'm said, what, what does a Mike McDaniel costume look like? He's like, I don't know. What I don't know what it looks like. He said, I think I think he said, like, I refuse to believe that's true or something like that. <laughs> yeah, he, I refuse to accept that as reality or something like that. Um, but yeah, let's talk about this game because we both do share a pick here. And um, you know what? We both share the same pick. We like the Chiefs. Now you got the money line. I wrote down minus one and a half. In hindsight, probably go with the money line because the extra bit of value isn't probably worth it that much. But the point being, we both think the Chiefs are going to win this football game. Now, just right off the bat, favorites in international games are 27 and 15 against the spread. That is a very short spread, but still the Chiefs are favored. So based on the precedent, you would be going with them. Kansas City is five and three against the spread. Miami six and two, so they're very similar there. But where they are dissimilar is we know the Chiefs can win big games. That's all they've done throughout the Mahomes era. The Dolphins have not beat a team with a winning record yet this season. In fact, four of their six wins are against teams with either one or only two wins. So they are the big bad bullies that steal lunch money from the little kids, but as soon as somebody stands up to them, they go running away and they ask the principal for help and they get the school resource officer called it. They, they don't like they don't like getting punched in the mouth. That's what Mike Tyson said. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. That's what's been going on with the Dolphins. Now they do have an incredible offense. As we all know, they lead the league in points. They lead the league in passing yards. They lead the league in rushing yards. But this Chiefs defense is different. They are allowing the second fewest points per game at 16. And I think the fact that it's in Germany is, is almost going to serve as a bit of an equalizer. I think it's going to reduce the offensive ceiling of the Dolphins to a certain extent. I think it's going to make this game a lot more competitive. I trust the Chiefs. I trust Mahomes, Kelsey, Andy Reid. I trust them in close games. And for that reason, I think the Chiefs do win this one. I like the Chiefs because the Miami Dolphins defense, it's terrible. Cold Heart Football Facts ranks them as the 26th ranked defense pass rating unit, the 25th defense rusher rating unit, and the 28th total team yards allowed uh, unit. That means special teams as well. That includes sacks, like it takes away sacks and all that. So they really just have not been the best team in the world when it comes to the defensive side of the ball. You look at their schedule, they've only beat trash teams. They're two tests. They've fallen apart. Um, so I think they're going to fall apart. Once again, I think Patrick Mahomes gets healthy. You can't think that the Chiefs aren't going to bounce back after what happened last week. Just can't do it. There have only been three instances since Patrick Mahomes took over as a starter that the Chiefs have lost back-to-back -back games. So happens less than one time per year. You know, the Chiefs lost last week. Now you're thinking they're going on the road out to Germany. Is it going to happen again? One thing I do want to say, by the way, is we need to be keeping an eye on the battle in the red zone here because the Dolphins, they lead the league in red zone scoring percentage or red zone, red zone touchdown scoring percentage, but they are 28th in red zone touchdown defense. So the difference between seven and three points in this game, because I think it should be fairly close, you know, even though we like the Chiefs, I think it's going to be decently close. Whether you get the touchdown, whether you get the field goal, that could be the difference between whether you win or lose in this game. And don't turn the ball over. Like the Chiefs turn the ball over in the red zone against the Broncos. You can't do that consistently can't get away with it it's just like the philadelphia eagles against your commanders like they got lucky to win that game because they turned over on the five yard line twice can't happen and speaking of turnovers even though tua and mahomes we didn't even mention this this is really huge for the mvp race because these are the top two guys on the favorites on the odds board but they, even though they are the two favorites, they've been turning the ball over an awful lot. Uh, Tua has five interceptions in his last five games. Mahomes has six interceptions in his last five games. Uh, Mahomes is one interception off the league lead. Tua is two off the league lead. And they have both thrown at least one interception in six of eight games. So very consistent turnovers coming away from both teams. That will, as you mentioned, be a very big part in deciding who wins this as well. Yeah, some of the passes Mahomes is throwing lately just don't look good. Like when he throws a pick, it's a bad pick. It's not like tipped in the air and someone. I think it's a frustration like, thing though because how many passes are being dropped? I think yeah. he's losing his cool a little bit. He's just throwing it to the defense. He just wants somebody to catch it. All right, <laughs> he wants somebody to catch it, no matter who they play for. Jaron Hall, twenty-five-year-old rookie out of BYU. This guy's a rookie, twenty-five years old. That's the one thing going for him. Um, he's not has not has no experience coming into this one the minnesota vikings just traded ezra cleveland their offensive guard cleveland did not pay, play the past couple weeks so they probably are all set with what they have up front but they did trade him away to jacksonville it makes jacksonville a stronger team when i look at the minnesota vikings kirk cousins is done justin jefferson still isn't playing right now the talent 
is okay at the receiver position. They've gotten by with Kirk Cousins, but you're not going to get by with Jaron Hall. You're not going to get by with Alexander Madison run the football against a, a good Falcons rushing defense. They rank second defensive rusher rate in according to Cold Heart Football Facts, fourth in defensive hog index. They're very good up front. The way to beat them is by throwing the football down the field. I just don't see Minnesota having the team to do it. This would have been a very good matchup for the Vikings if Kirk Cousins was playing, but I can't bet on Jaron Hall in this spot. And also we got Taylor Heineke. By the way, shout out to Taylor Heineke. Probably the best Halloween costume I've ever seen in my life. And if, it's It's got a million views over on the WSN TikTok if you want to go check it out. But it is the best, best costume ever. He was the Alex Moran of the NFL from Blue Mountain State. He's that guy. And I think he gives them a much better chance to win than Desmond Ritter. Desmond Ritter is just horrendous. He likes turning the ball over. He enjoys it. I think Taylor Heineke is going to be a much better quarterback in this spot. Lead the Falcons down the field. Find a way to win games. They have talent like Drake London. There's guys that can catch the football. There's guys that you got Kyle Pitts. There's guys that can go out and make plays for him. I think Heineke's the guy to deliver. They cover three and a half. I don't want to insult you because I think this is a square bet. It's the three and a half, not the three. I think there's going to be a huge percentage of Americans that are on this bet. But I would be right there with you. I think you have to go with the Falcons no, in this spot. Three and a half the dog. They, they want three and a half. They want to pull you to the dog, Grant. Come on. Well, yes, but I'm saying you, you're laying the three and a half. That, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. It's a square bet. It's three and a half so that you can't, that the field sharp. goal isn't on your side. Just sharp. It's sharp. I'm saying they're going to win by seven. What? I'm, they're going to win by seven. Yeah, but I'm saying look at the line. It's three and a half, not three. And if you're laying points, you don't want to lay three and a half. Yeah, I think the square bet's taking the, the Vikings plus three and a half. Saying well, no, they listen, plus. I'm saying I am on your side in this pick. But All it's right, square. buy down to three then. Just buy down to three. Whatever. All right, whatever. The, the point being that you have, to, you have to lay more than a field goal and a lot of Americans, I feel like, are going to be on this side of the bet. Take the square part out of it. So that would instinctively say, hey, maybe there should be an element of caution. But I'm with you. I think the Falcons win this game and they win big. The fact that the Vikings drafted this guy, Jaron Hall, and, and you know, supposed to, you want to develop your rookies, but then they go out and they trade for Joshua Dobbs shows you that they don't have that much confidence in him. Justin Jefferson isn't going to be there. Um, when you're a team that has as much talent as the Falcons and you make any sort of major switch, it's going to give you a boost no matter what. Set aside the fact Taylor Heineke is probably better than Desmond Ritter is just straight up. I think that's going to be a big win for the Falcons. Give me an alternate spread, minus six and a half. I mean, <laughs> the, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't do that. There's probably not enough value for that. Give me an alternate spread. It's probably plus 320. Yeah. No, no plus, way. Plus 230. It's plus two. I bet it's plus 230. I bet you it's plus 180. Plus 230. Are you looking at it? No, but I'm thinking <laughs> my head. All right, cool. The Tanner Sportsbook. All right, Tanner, my second pick, I'm going to take the Chicago Bears plus eight and a half versus the New Orleans Saints. Both teams are 2-5-1 and one against the spread, which is not good, but the Saints are 0-3 oh against the spread as home favorites. Um, the Bears have shown some improvement on the defensive side of the football. They are allowing just 20 points per game over the last four, whereas I believe it was over 30 in their first three games. They also got Montez Sweat in the trade with the Commanders. Now, he's probably not going to play the full game because he's not going to be ready, but it's not hard to send a new defensive end in there and say, hey, go get the quarterback on the ground or hold contain you know it's not total it's not the most difficult position in the world to pick up so I think we should see him on the field there the Saints looked really good in their win against the Colts last week and while that might inspire optimism in a lot of people history tells you that the Saints don't really stack good performances and, and neither does Derek Carr in his last 12 games there's only been one time where he's had back-to-back -back games with the QBR above 50 his QBR was in the 70s last week I think he's going to bounce back in the opposite way go down to the 30s should the the Saints still win this game, absolutely, but I think the Bears can keep it close. Tyson Bajan actually hasn't looked that bad. Again, the defense looks all right. DJ Moore is a pretty good playmaker, so I think the Bears can keep it at least a little bit close in this one. You see Bajan rapping Eminem? I did not. What song was he rapping? I think Lose Yourself. Oh, of course. Every yeah. every, every white guy. <laughs> I like Bajan. I like Bajan. Bajan's, he's a cool guy. I, I would take this back. I agree, Grant. I think they keep it close. Thank you. Did you find the odds on your minus six and a half? You'll never guess. Plus 134. Yeah, plus 230 was crazy. Well, plus 180 was crazy too. Well, they don't they don't like giving you they don't like giving you a lot of odds boosts for alternate spreads for whatever reason. Well, you may make again, it makes sense. Cause I guess if you if you bet 
if you take seven and a half, like if that's that's what you like, you don't get you don't get uh, credit for doing like a six and a half. You get credit for doing a seven and a half. So that's kind of thing. Because if they win by if they win by three and a half, there's a good chance they win by seven. Yeah, for sure. It's all about critical numbers. Yeah. So let's see here. It is if you took seven and a half. Seven and a half would be plus one seventy two. So you for doing a point, you jump forty. 40, uh, 40 cents there. I wouldn't do that though. I don't think that's worth it. No. And then plus 190 for eight and a half. What's well, three? If you buy down to, th- you can't even buy down to three. You can buy down to two and a half on FanDuel at least. All right. Final pick here. This is, this is the battle of, battle of slightly obese quarterbacks. Mac is more obese than Sam Howe. This, this is, this is the, the ride the line derby. This is Grant versus Tanner. I'm, I'm so no, it's not even Grant versus Tanner because I'm on I'm on your side here. This is this is this is what it's all about here. This is this is Sam Howe going for it all. What are you getting? Come on, Tanner, right here. All right, I'm gonna take the Commanders this weekend. A plus three. Here's what I'm just gonna give everyone a warning. You're gonna see this happen on Sunday because it happens. It happens every week. The majority of the money is against the Patriots, and then the line is gonna move towards the Patriots, which would signal reverse line movement. It's happened every damn week. Every week it's happened so far. Like the past three, I'd say. It doesn't mean anything. Don't expect it to mean anything. This Patriots team's terrible. They're absolute trash. We've seen it consistently. They're not good. They don't have receivers. They tore their ACLs. They don't have talent. Mac Jones is terrible. Needs to go get a damn Big Mac. He's just not good. Um, and the thing, and I, you know, I'm behind Mac Jones. I liked him. He, there's absolutely no fight there. Like we come off the field. It's just like, like ask him like what the game, like, yeah, we, you know, we gotta be better. And like, I, I'm, I'm not giving up on my team. Like, no, like say this shit's on me. I got to figure it out. I'm not making the plays that I need to go make. And it's pissing me off. That's what he's got to say. Like he's got to be a freaking bulldog for me. I just don't see Mac Jones as a bulldog. Again, the Patriots could easily win and cover in this game. I just think what Sam Howell did last weekend against the Eagles, even though the Eagles weren't even playing, didn't didn't have anyone in their secondary last weekend um, playing defense. I think it was still very impressive. Mac Jones could not do that one bit. He could not make the throws that Sam Howell made last weekend. So for that reason, I think if the commanders do get going against Patriots defense, it has not been great by any means in the past few weeks. I think they find a way to cover and win this game. I think that the I think Sam Howell definitely has more intangibles than Mac Jones. This is what I'll say. Sam Howell, I think he's about 20th in QBR. He's thrown a lot of interceptions, but he's sixth in passing yards. He's still willing to take risks. He gets through his progressions very well. He does make mistakes. Um, you know, I, I was in person at that game. I saw the mistakes that he made. But 80, 90 percent of the time, he does look really good. It's it's like I said, or uh, maybe it was this week or last week. I said he's like a baby version of Josh Allen where he's like very good. And then he just makes these crazy mistakes. Now, obviously he's not as good as Josh Allen, not even close. I'm not saying that, but same sort of build. What I would worry about is what does the message that trading chase young and Montez sweat, what does that send to the rest of the defense? Because that, that commander's defense going into the year, I think people were saying probably somewhere between like eighth to 12th in defense. A lot of people had them in the top 10. They've been one of the five worst defenses in the entire league. And now you've got rid of, you know, maybe two of your three or two of your four best players on that side of the football. Just what is what is that in what impact does that have to the rest of the team? I would be worried about that. Um, honestly, I don't think either team deserves to be favored by more than a field goal. So I appreciate you going with the commanders here. I don't know if I'd be willing to lay that much, but I do think they will win. I can say that. I think they are a better team than the Patriots. Well, I just want to say too, and to give Mac a little, I was a little hard on Mac because Mac's my quarterback. And, and again, he's my quarterback who's for the Patriots, but he doesn't have any like Jahan Donson, and Terry McLaurin. Like you give Mac those two guys, he's going to be better. He doesn't have anything close to that. Well, I don't know. Terry, the commanders should have beat the Eagles. Let, let's not forget Terry McLaurin dropped a third down and a fourth down pass. Which he also made some big plays during the game, though, too. It was Dotson. Uh, that was the Dotson game. I'll take I'll take Terry McLaurin. You want to give me Terry McLaurin? I'll take it. No, I don't. I don't want to give you Terry. I'll McLaurin. give you whoever you want for him because we have nobody that can even stack up to him. Um, I think what you're talking about the defense. It basically says that hey, we're three and five and we have no chance in the NFC East. So we're gonna go get some offensive linemen next year in the draft for guys that we have no control over because we have a quarterback that can win games. I think that's what it's, I think if you're a command if you if you play for the Commanders you, and you're happy, like I think you're I think you're happy in this spot. 
Like, you know, you got a, you got a team that can possibly win the future and you're going to get draft capital for him. It's not like you have Chase Young and Montez Sweat to, for the next three years. You're, just, you're get It's a good deal sending those guys away for a second and a third round pick. It was absolutely the right move from an organizational standpoint. It's just what does that say to the, the players on the team? Um, while we're on this topic, before we move on to my final pick, do you want to at all just give me 30 seconds of your thoughts on the report that the commanders might trade for Bill Belichick? Um, I don't think so. I, I had to tell, take him. He's not good without Tom Brady. I think it's a win for Robert Kraft. It's a win for Belichick. It's a lose for the commanders. Wait, That's so how who, I would look at it. Who do we get in return? Probably like not, a second round pick. Not Riverboat Ron. No, no, no. You wouldn't get the coach. You'd get like a second round pick, maybe maybe a first, and then you'd just go hire someone. So I think it's kind of I, – I don't think the whole trading for coaches thing is going to – happen i think that's too disrespectful of bill like belichick's time i think belichick's time in new england like believe me uh robert Kraft will fire him but i think his time in new england will be on his own time i don't think they're going to disrespect him and trade him i think it's better to say hey we're gonna you're you're fired kind of and then he takes a job somewhere else but okay but what if robert Kraft says we don't want to stain your legacy by having to fire you but that's what we're going to do however there's a work around there's a there's a get out of jail free card where we can trade you so your legacy doesn't have to have the stain of being fired on it but you can go start somewhere new and we can move on i don't think and you can keep coaching and try to get don shula's win record and all that yeah i don't think it's i don't think it's i think it's better just to ask him to step down I think like, like, you know, and do it as I'm retiring. You know how they all do it like that? Like, but Belichick's not going to do that. That's the thing. He's too proud to do that. I don't know. I think, I think, I don't know. I I think they ask him to fire. He steps down and goes somewhere else. It might, I I don't think they, a trading a coach would be wild. That's how Belichick got there in the first place. But that was a long time. Yeah. This guy, like, he's not like what, what is, and I love Bill Belichick. I mean, he's, he's won a lot. He's won a lot of games, but if you look at his record without Tom Brady, what has he done? Well, he was phenomenal as that defensive coordinator with the Giants, but as a head coach, he's yeah, under five hundred. What has he done? Yeah, that's that's so that's what you're getting. You're going to get a head coach that's under five hundred without Tom Brady. So I don't know if that's worth a first round pick. At, it, at, he's what is he? Seventy years old? Yeah, seventy one, seventy two, something yeah. like that. I mean, I wouldn't. I, I want a young like Sean McVay guy. Oh yeah, I think it's. I think in that scenario, it works for Bill. It works for the Patriots. I don't think it works for the Commanders. I I get that Josh Harris and that ownership group. They're probably going to make. I mean, Ron Rivera deserved to go a long time ago. I think he's finally getting the bullet this off season. Maybe you look at Eric Bieniemy, but I, I would rather. I would rather have Bieniemy. I'd rather have Ben Johnson, the Lions OC. I would rather have someone like that. Um, Lincoln Riley supposedly wants to come to the NFL. Now I would have major concerns there because he can't even get his defense sorted out in college, but still I would rather have Lincoln Riley than Bill Belichick Lincoln because Riley. it's, it's a new era of football. It's an, uh, it's an offensive focused league. You know, I don't want to be the team that is paying pennies on the dollar for inferior talent to, to have a losing record with an angry head coach that doesn't like talking to the fans. No, I don't Bill, want that. Bill's the GM too. So like this, this whole, the whole, the whole downfall of the Patriots in a way is on Bill Belichick because he doesn't have Tom Brady. He's still coaching the same way as if he did have Tom Brady. He's the GM too. Like a lot of these guys aren't the GM. They just take what they're given. You know, like Bill Belichick is is the one making the decision on the players. The same thing that made him so successful is now what's going to lead him to, to fail because at the end of his career. Have Tom Brady. That's the bot. Like Tom Brady made everyone better. He's like, Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback for that. Like he made everyone better. And they, they got a lot out of the guys that they, they got like, Wes Welker, Julian Edelman, like all these guys that probably weren't going to be anything and amount to anything, they got really lucky and they became something. So they're not getting that anymore. You're not getting that out of these Juju Smith-Schuster, even though he's hurt. Well, from Tom Brady to, I would say, the guy that's most similar to Tom Brady in the NFL. This is my final pick of the show. This is our final pick of the show. I like the Cincinnati Bengals minus one and a half. I think Joe Burrow, first of all, Joe Burrow is back, Tanner. We agree on that. Joe Burrow is freaking back. I think he is the closest thing to Tom Brady in the terms in terms of, you know, Mahomes is the best player in the NFL. Let's not get that twisted. But Burrow is that sort of, I don't want to call him stationary, but more pocket focused. 
get the ball out quickly on time, calm in the face of adversity. Nothing, nothing angers him. He's too cool for school, but he will show a lot of fire when you need him to. I think he's the closest thing to Brady in the league right now. He had 283 yards and three touchdowns, completed all but four of his passes against the Niners last week. He looked absolutely amazing. The Bengals have all of a sudden won three straight, straight games. Uh, they beat the Niners and they beat the Seahawks. Those are two really impressive wins, two of the top teams in the NFC. Their defense also during that three-game win streak has suddenly come to life, held opponents to 17 points. Um, that would be third if you applied it to the season as a whole. Now they're getting their hands full with the Bills because Josh Allen, he's been criticized a lot and I think fairly – for most of the part, but recently it's been a little unfair. He's still one of the top guys in the league. Um, his turnovers haven't been egregious. He's it's funny in his last four games, he's thrown two, two through start over in his last four games. He's thrown two touchdowns and one interception in all of them. You know, Mahomes and Tua, like I was talking about earlier, they've been throwing interceptions too, but it's been Josh Allen. that has been getting criticized more for that. He's actually been pretty good. But that Bills defense is just, it's starting to slip. Their defensive rankings still look pretty good overall, but they're 22nd against the run. Uh, Joe Mixon and crew ran for 134 yards last week. Burroughs 1-0 against Josh Allen. He smoked him in the playoffs last year. Looked like they were going to roll him in the DeMar Hamlin game before that game was suspended. Um, I think this is a spot where the Bengals are just really hot. This is what they do every year. They start slow. They heat up as the playoffs approach. And the Bills are just going in the wrong direction in all aspects. We've talked about it before. And, um, you know, I think this I think this game could officially be the end of the Bills. Not that they're going to suddenly be out of the playoffs or anything like that. But I think this could be the decisive game where you say there's 100. There's no doubt about it. They are not a top threat in the AFC. Well, Joe Burrow owns Josh Allen. He owns Patrick Mahomes. Say what you want about last year's game. He owns Patrick Mahomes. Like Joe Burrow. It, it was so weird. We we're talking about this before the show. Like it's so weird how Joe Burrow, we did not talk about him for like nine weeks of the NFL season besides him sucking basically. Like he, like we, Joe Burrow is a non-factor. Joe Burrow's back. The league better watch out. Like the Bengals are a great bet to win. The AFC. they're a great bet to win the Super Bowl right now. Yep, 100%. And looking at the Bills, you know, I've been talking about the Bengals won three straight games. Look at the Bills' last month of play. So, so they lose to the Jags. They were down 12 points with three minutes to go. The final score flatters them a little, but they still lost. They had a five-point win against the Giants in a game which they should have lost, and they committed a blatant hold on the final play of the game. That game should still be, be played. They lost to the Patriots. And then they only beat the Buccaneers by six points in prime time when the Bucs really just didn't do anything the whole game. It's been a very unimpressive last month. They have not covered in four straight games. Um, you know, and I mean, the Bengals are favored in this one despite having a worse record, which means the odds makers think they are a better team um, overall. I just think this is a game you, you got to go with the Bengals. You got to go with the hot hand. Matt Milano's out and Tredavious White is out. We all know that, but that seems to be having crippling effects on the defense of the bills so i think the Bengals win this one i think it's a strong win too i think it's seven plus yeah i agree with that it's joe burrow this this is the cementing the fact that joe burrow's back if he can win this game and then if you want to bet the Bengals to win the super bowl or something bet them right now because after this game if they win it's just gonna go boom yeah i'm actually this is how we can close out the show i do actually want to check on that i want to see what the super bowl odds are because even during the first three, four weeks, the odds makers still had the Bengals pretty high. Now, they did drop okay. off after it became plus apparent that they weren't the best. But Plus 1,200, I think. Let's see. At DraftKings, they have the Bengals. They have the Bengals set. Wow, they have them seventh behind the Lions at sixth. Uh, they got the Bengals a plus 1,400. 14, you know yeah. what? Uh, well, I'll just do a full read. Chiefs, Niners, Eagles, Dolphins, Cowboys, Lions, Bengals, Ravens, Jags, Bills. That's your top 10. Values on the Bengals. All the values on the Bengals. I don't trust the Ravens. Um, I think this could be their year, but they also have not given a reason in the past to trust them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's Joe Burr. Joe Burr is getting back. He's hungry. It's the narrative. They're going to get to the AFC Championship game. It's gonna no. They they would probably sneak in. As, they could they could sneak in as like one of the lower wild card spots, depending on how their record goes. It's going gonna, it's gonna to flash back. It's going to Joe Burrow in Arrowhead once again, and Joe Burrow's going to win. I'm, j I'm just trying to figure – so let's say the Chiefs finish with the top seed in the AFC because they probably will. Um, the Ravens are 6-2. and two, The Bengals are 4-3. and three. The Ravens will probably hold on to the top spot in the AFC North. Can the Bengals get that five seed? 
they probably can. And if they do that, then they they get the five seed. Then I think they would they host eight. What they host eight? Then I don't eight, eight teams make playoffs, right? No seven. seven. Would, so the Bengals, the Chiefs would get the bye. Two plays, two plays seven, three plays six, four plays five. They would play the two three game. They would not play the one four game. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, right? Five, 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 four plays, five plays six, four, four, the four. Oh, no, it's just the lowest seed. That's how the NFL works. It's the lowest seed. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a chance we could get them in the AFC Championship a game, a game again for the third year in a row. You would probably get them in the divisional round. Probably, yeah. The probably. Divisional round Chiefs at Arrowhead. I'd be a good game either way. Yeah. I'd bet the, bet the, Bill, the Bengals right now. Guys, that's going to do it for do it. Friday Friday NFL picks. Looking ahead to NFL Week 9. You guys know what to do. Make sure that you drop some comments. Let us know what your favorite picks of the week are. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Tanner, take us on out of here. That was Ride the Line, the greatest podcast in sports betting entertainment. We will see you Monday for another episode.